When the power went out in the small suburban house, Jessica let out an exasperated sigh. She had been in the middle of cooking dinner when the lights flickered and then went out completely. She grabbed her phone and used its flashlight to navigate her way to the living room where her husband, James, and their two children, Sheila and Henry, were sitting in the darkness. What's going on? James asked, confusion evident in his voice. The power's out, Jessica replied, irritation lacing her tone. I'll see if I can find some candles. Jessica fumbled around in a drawer until she found a lighter and then made her way to the kitchen to locate some candles. The only ones she found were small tea lights, but they would have to do. She lit them and placed them around the living room, casting a dim glow that did little to dispel the darkness. Why did the power go out? Sheila asked, fear creeping into her voice. I don't know, James replied, his own voice sounding shaken. Maybe it's just a temporary outage. Despite James' words, a sense of unease settled over the family. They were used to small power outages that didn't last more than a few minutes, but this was different. The darkness seemed impenetrable and oppressive, and the silence was deafening. Suddenly, the sound of a car engine revving outside shattered the silence. The family looked at each other in alarm, wondering who could be driving in complete darkness. James got up and walked to the window, peering out into the night. Someone's driving down the street, he said, his voice tense. I can't see who it is. Jessica felt a shiver run down her spine at the thought of someone prowling outside in complete darkness. She had heard stories of burglaries and home invasions that happened during power outages, and the thought made her skin crawl. Maybe we should call the police, she suggested, her voice faltering. The phones aren't working, James replied, his tone grim. The family sat in silence, the only sounds the beating of their own hearts and the faint hum of the refrigerator slowly dying away. Despite the candles, the darkness seemed to grow thicker with each passing moment, suffocating and oppressive. Without warning, the sound of footsteps echoed through the house. The family held their breaths, listening intently. The footsteps drew closer, and the family huddled together fear coursing through their veins. The sound of the door opening sent them over the edge. They leaped up, ready to confront whoever dared to enter their home. But instead of a masked intruder, they found their neighbor Claire standing in the doorway, a flashlight clutched in her hand. I heard the powers out, Claire said, relief evident in her voice. The phones aren't working, James replied, his voice harsh. And there's someone prowling outside. Claire's face went white as a sheet, and she stepped back into the darkness, closing the door behind her. The family watched her go, unsure of what to do or say. Suddenly, the sound of a window breaking shattered the silence, followed by the sound of shattering glass. The family let out a collective scream, realizing that someone was trying to break into their home. We have to barricade the doors and windows, James said, his voice shaking. The family dashed around the house, gathering whatever they could find to block the entrances. They pushed the couch up against the front door and piled heavy boxes against the windows. The candles flickered ominously, casting ghostly shadows on the walls. The sound of someone pounding on the door sent them all into a frenzy. Henry and Sheila huddled together, tears streaming down their faces, while Jessica held on to James, panic written all over her face. Please, just go away! James yelled, his voice trembling. The pounding continued, loud and insistent. Suddenly, with a loud crash, the door gave way, sending the family stumbling backward. A figure stood in the doorway, their features obscured by the darkness. The family stared, frozen in fear, unsure of what to do. Who are you? What do you want? Jessica stammered, her voice barely audible. The figure stepped forward and as they moved into the flickering candlelight, the family let out a collective sigh of relief. It was their other neighbor, Mr. Johnson, his face lined with worry. I heard the noise and came to check if everything was all right, Mr. Johnson said, his voice soft. I'm sorry I scared you. The family let out a collective sigh of relief, grateful that they had not been facing an intruder. The power was still out, and the darkness still enveloped them but the fear was lessened now that they knew they were not alone. 
The rest of the night passed in a haze of fear and uncertainty. The family took turns watching the doors and windows, listening to the sounds of the night, hoping that the power would come back and put an end to their ordeal. When the sun finally began to rise, the family heaved a collective sigh of relief. The darkness lifted, and the sounds of the morning filled the air. They ventured outside, inspecting their home for any signs of damage, grateful to have survived the night without any major incidents. As the power came back on, the family sat in the living room, staring at the flickering lights, still shaken by their ordeal. The blackout may have been caused by a power outage, but the fear and uncertainty they had experienced were all too real. From that day on, the family never took their safety for granted again. They invested in backup generators and emergency kits, knowing that they could never be too prepared for the unexpected. And though they never forgot the fear and uncertainty of that terrifying blackout, they vowed to be ready for anything that came their way. The city skyline gleamed with lights as night fell, casting a mesmerizing glow over the bustling streets. People hurried along the sidewalks, going about their evening routines. Sarah, a young professional, had just finished a long day at work and was looking forward to a relaxing evening at home. As she entered her apartment building and rode the elevator to her floor, Sarah noticed that the hallway lights were flickering. She shrugged it off, thinking it was just a minor electrical issue. Little did she know that this would be the beginning of a terrifying experience. Upon unlocking her apartment door, she stepped inside and turned on the lights. To her horror, the entire apartment plunged into darkness. The blackout hit, leaving her surrounded by an eerie silence. She fumbled around for her phone and used its flashlight to navigate her way to the circuit breaker. As she pressed the switches, hoping to restore power, a strange feeling settled upon her. She couldn't shake the sensation of being watched. The tightness in her chest grew as she scanned the empty apartment, her imagination running wild. Was there someone else with her in the darkness? Just as the panic started to rise, the lights blinked back to life. Sarah sighed with relief, attributing the unsettling feeling to her own overactive imagination. She made her way to her living room, about to call it a night, when something caught her eye in the hallway mirror. She froze, unable to comprehend what she was seeing. Behind her, reflected in the mirror, was the dimly lit figure of a man with sinister eyes. Her heartbeat quickened, and a lump formed in her throat. Who was he? How did he get in? Swallowing her fear, she turned around, only to find an empty corridor. There was no sign of the man. Doubt and confusion clouded her mind. Had it all been her imagination, fueled by the darkness and the flickering lights? Brushing it off as a trick of the light, Sarah tried to regain her composure. She settled into her cozy living room, trying to relax, but her unease lingered like a shadow. The television hummed softly, casting a pale glow across the room. Suddenly, the power went out again, plunging her into darkness once more. The adrenaline surged through her veins, and a knot of fear twisted in her stomach. This time, it wasn't just her imagination playing tricks on her. Sarah groped her way to the window, hoping to see lights from neighboring buildings and reassure herself that it was a citywide blackout. But to her astonishment, she saw a strange phenomenon. The city below her was ablaze with lights, as if nothing had gone wrong at all. It was as if she was the only one experiencing the darkness. A noise broke the silence, a creaking sound coming from her bedroom. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as she tiptoed through the apartment her phone flashlight leading the way. With every step, the fear intensified. As she entered her bedroom, she gasped in horror. The wardrobe door was wide open, its contents scattered on the floor. It was clear someone had been through her belongings. The realization hit her like a punch in the gut. There was an intruder in her apartment. Filled with terror, Sarah's survival instincts kicked in. She retreated to her bathroom locking the door behind her. She desperately reached for her phone to call the police, only to realize her battery was almost dead. A sinking feeling washed over her, but she knew she had to stay calm and quiet. Minutes ticked by, and Sarah heard nothing but the sound of her own heartbeat in her ears. The darkness wrapped around her like a suffocating blanket, 
filling the bathroom with an overwhelming sense of dread. Her mind raced, imagining all the terrible scenarios of what could happen next. Suddenly, she heard a soft voice, barely audible over her pounding heart. Sarah. The voice was familiar, sending chills down her spine. It was a voice she had thought she would never hear again. Her ex-boyfriend, whom she had broken up with months ago after a tumultuous relationship. Sarah, I only wanted to talk. The voice whispered again from the other side of the door. Tears welled up in her eyes as fear turned into anger. How did he find her? How did he manage to get into her apartment? She gathered her courage and shouted, Leave! I'm calling the police! Silence fell over the apartment. Her ex-boyfriend, realizing he had been caught, quickly retreated into the darkness. Sarah remained in the bathroom, trembling with a mix of relief and fear. Hours later, when the power eventually returned, Sarah cautiously emerged from the bathroom. She immediately called the police and recounted the terrifying ordeal. They assured her they would investigate thoroughly and offered to have an officer stay with her through the night. In the days that followed, her apartment was secured, and she took extra precautions to ensure her safety. Sarah's heartache turned into determination. She sought a restraining order and rebuilt her life with newfound strength. Though the experience was horrifying, it taught Sarah to trust her instincts and face her fears head-on. The darkness may have brought terror, but it also illuminated the strength within her to overcome the darkest of situations. And from that day forward, she vowed never to let fear dictate her life again. Emily had always been scared of the dark. As a child, she would never go outside after the sun set and would always sleep with an eye light on. However, as she grew older, she managed to overcome her phobia and went about her life, confident that she could handle any situation. But that was all about to change. Emily was on a business trip in a large city, attending a conference in one of the many towering skyscrapers. After the meetings had finished, she was excited to explore the city and decided to take a walk around her hotel. The weather was mild and pleasant, and she enjoyed the gentle breeze as she strolled down the bustling street. As she reached the end of the street, she decided to turn around and head back towards her hotel. However, just as she made the turn, everything went black. Lights flickered, and people screamed and stumbled in the dark. A blackout had hit the city, leaving Emily stranded in the dark unknown. As panic started to take hold, Emily realized that she needed to find a safe place to wait out the blackout. The city was now a chaotic maze, and she had no idea where to go. She tried to steady her breathing, blocking out the pandemonium around her, and started to find her way back to the hotel. The darkness made everything more difficult. Emily couldn't see where she was going, and she stumbled over debris and trash. Fear started climbing inside of her, and she felt like she was running in circles, getting nowhere. She could hear the screams and noise from outside, but she couldn't tell where they were coming from. The darkness seemed to compress and surround her, closing in tighter and tighter, like an impenetrable prison. As Emily continued down the street, she came across a man lying face down on the pavement, and before she could stop herself, she had already bent down to check his pulse. She was relieved when she could feel the faint thud of his heartbeat, but became alarmed when she realized he wasn't breathing. Emily started performing CPR, trying to revive the unconscious man. She counted each compression and each breath, hoping to keep him safe until the paramedics arrived. She didn't even notice when the lights flickered back to life. When the paramedics arrived, they thanked her for her quick response and dedication to helping a stranger in need. But even as they spoke to her, even as the crowd of people that had gathered around dispersed, Emily was beginning to feel like something wasn't right. Something felt off. From the first moment that Emily started her walk back to her hotel, she started feeling like something was following her. It was an eerie feeling which she couldn't seem to shake. She looked over her shoulder so many times that the people around her started giving her funny looks. But Emily didn't care. She didn't feel safe, even in a well-lit city. As she finally made it back to the hotel, Emily breathed a sigh of relief, but her feeling of unease refused to dissipate. She tried to go to bed, but sleep evaded her. Instead, she lay awake, staring at the ceiling, every sound amplified by her racing mind. 
She wished that there was somebody there to talk to, but she was all alone. She decided to take a shower, hoping that the hot water would calm her nerves. As she stood there, the steam enveloping her, she suddenly heard the door to the bathroom creak open. At first, she thought it was just the old pipes playing tricks on her mind, but then she heard something else. The sound of footsteps, soft and muffled. Emily didn't move. She stood there, frozen with fear, the water washing over her. Her heart was pounding in her chest, and she could feel herself starting to hyperventilate. And then she saw it. Right there on the bathroom floor was a shadow. A shadow that was moving on its own. Emily stepped out of the shower, her her legs shaking. She knew that she had to keep her cool, that she couldn't give in to her terror. She decided to investigate, grabbing a towel and wrapping it around herself as she stepped out of the bathroom. The entire hotel was eerily quiet, and it seemed that the light wasn't working in her room. Emily didn't know what to do, but then she heard a sound, a sound that she recognized. It was the sound of a keycard being used to open a door. Emily stood still, her heart pounding harder and harder. She could hear someone moving around in the room across the hall. She didn't know what to do, but then she heard something even more unbelievable. It was the sound of someone walking up the stairs, slowly but surely making their way up to her floor. Emily knew that she had to act fast. She quickly wrapped herself in the towel, making sure that she was decent, and then quietly slipped out of her hotel room. She could hear the footsteps getting closer and closer, so she made her way to the stairs, hoping to get a good look at whoever was coming. As she reached the stairs, Emily saw a man, a tall, muscular man, making his way up the stairs. His face was distorted into a contorted scowl, and it was clear that he was angry about something. Emily could feel her heart racing in her chest, but she didn't back down. She made her way down the stairs, trying to keep as quiet as possible, but the man saw her. He let out a roar, his eyes full of fury, and started chasing her down the stairs. Emily was running as fast as she could, but it was difficult to see where she was going. The darkness was so thick that it was like running in a nightmare. She could hear the man's footsteps getting closer and closer, and she knew that if she didn't act quickly, he would catch her. Emily saw a door at the end of the hallway, some kind of storage room or closet. She quickly slipped inside and locked the door behind her. She could hear the man pounding on the door, trying to break it down. She backed away, not knowing what to do. And then, the man suddenly stopped pounding on the door. Emily could hear footsteps retreating down the hallway, and she knew that she was safe, for the moment at least. She spent what felt like hours locked in that storage room, trying to get her bearings. But then, she heard a voice, a voice she recognized, calling out to her. Emily knew that she had to be brave, that she had to face whatever was going on, so she opened the door. There, standing in front of her, was a middle-aged man, a hotel employee. He looked at her with relief, signaling for her to follow him. Emily didn't know what was going on, but she knew that she had to follow him. The man led Emily out of the hotel, down a set of stairs and out into the street. There, she could see that the entire city was dark, that the skyline had gone black. The man explained that the blackout had been caused by a massive power outage, and that they were working to fix it. They had set up an emergency center where people could go to get assistance, and that was where they were headed. As they walked, Emily couldn't help feeling like something was off. The hotel employee seemed like a good person, but she couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Her senses were heightened, every sound, every movement suddenly ominous. And then, they made it to the emergency center. It was a large, open space, with people milling around, trying to find shelter or assistance. Emily felt a sense of relief, but then she heard the man's voice, his words laced with malice. He reached out and grabbed her arm, pulling her aside. And then, Emily realized too late that she had been wrong about him, that he wasn't there to protect her. He was there to hurt her. Emily screamed, trying to fight him off, but he was too strong. She could feel his grip tightening around her throat, and she knew that she was in trouble. But then, out of nowhere, people came swarming in, separating the man from Emily. They subdued him, called the police, 
and made sure that Emily was okay. In the end, the blackout was fixed, and Emily was safely on her way home. But the experience had left her shaken and on edge, frightened of the darkness that had brought her so much danger. She knew that life could be unpredictable, but she never thought that something as simple as a blackout could be so terrifying, so full of human flaws.